Um, okay, so my name is Alej Hischuk. I am Chief Operating Officer here at SDC Verifier. Most of you already know me for quite a long time. I've been with SDC Verifier for more than 10 years now. And But I'll also see that there is plenty of, of new people. So uh, we'll start with a very brief one minute introduction of SDC Verifier. And I'm joined today by uh, my colleagues, uh, Bohdan Melnik, who is leading our software development. So for any tricky or complicated questions or concerns, feel free to address questions to him as well. And he will co-host this webinar. And Petronek, who is uh, uh, leading our marketing department, he will make sure that everything goes smoothly in case of any uh, uh, questions you will also uh, point these questions out to the public in the end, and you will also uh, uh, process the recording and uh, and the chat. So, uh, yeah, let's dig into the action immediately, and let's speak about today's agenda. So, uh, We'll start with, as I already said, extremely brief introduction with one slide of what is SDC Verifier nowadays. The software is being developed for more than 13 years, so it evolved a lot. And there is people who have been using SDC Verifier five, six years ago and now joining our meeting and also a lot of new people. So um, I'll indicate the workflow once again. Then we'll speak about the new code, uh, Eurocode 3 connection check. We'll speak about the new optimizations added to our optimization tool. It's a very uh, big update in, in terms of uh, optimization. We'll speak about hotspot stress method, which is uh, added to SDC verifier checks. We will uh, discuss a couple of new tools like uh, compression only support tool, like the tool to apply <clears throat> a multiple nodal forces to different selections at the same time. Uh, we will uh, speak about simplification of the filling the uh, wizards for the standards and minor uh, some minor updates like exporting items from uh, report to project. Of course, it's not everything what's been added in in last half a year. This is uh, big features or features that I would like to uh, indicate. You can uh, some of you already downloaded the new version and can uh, see the. the New features, some of you Alec, are still Alec, in sorry, Alec, uh, yeah. uh, Some participants said that they don't hear you well, but I'm hearing you well. And maybe if uh, someone also uh, had uh, uh, hear you, can uh, yeah, can uh, tell or write down because two two of yeah, them. Please, please send in the chat if if you can. Uh... If you have some problems and also if you can hear me well, I received messages yeah, that course. it's all okay. Uh, I'll switch off the video also for the presentation. So maybe that will help a bit. Uh, and I receive messages that everybody else can hear me very well. So please check the connection on your side. Maybe I'll add a bit of volume. Okay. Uh, if, yeah. it, if it will happen again, just, uh, just send me a message or uh, unmute yourself and uh, let me know. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so what I was saying is that uh, some people already had an experience with uh, SDC Verifier, some people are new, and with this new version, we indicated a lot of features, all of them are uh, displayed in what's new page on our website. So you're welcome to visit that and you're welcome to download the software and upgrade. Uh, your licenses are automatically, floating licenses are automatically updated to the newest version. Uh, for those who continue the maintenance of SDC Verifier, if you have a single computer license, just send another request to, to update the license file. Okay, so extremely brief introduction of SDC Verifier. Nowadays, SDC Verifier supports three uh, main FEA programs. It is uh, FEMAP, it is um, ANSYS Mechanical, ANSYS Workbench, and it is SimCenter 3D. Uh, this diagram shows the uh, code checking process with SDC Verifier. Uh, software has grown a lot and now it's not only code checks, but a lot of pre and post-processing actions that 
benefits the code checking process and that complements this process. So at the very beginning, SDC Verifier connects to your FEA model to read all the necessary data, outputs, and model parameters. Next step is loading combinations. And here SDC Verifier enables the possibility to combine the loads according to any type of standard. Basically, you can build a matrix of the standard and take into account all possible scenarios. And this allows to um, this allows to verify your model under hundreds or thousands of, of conditions. Next item is recognition. Recognition allows to detect structural members out of your finite element model. So all types of structural members like beams, uh, joints, connections, welds, and so on are automatically detected within one button click. Next one is checks. We have more than 30 standards in the library of SDC Verifier nowadays. Uh, this amount is constantly growing. We're adding new standards. Our customers are adding new standards. You can, uh, as and as usual, uh, our checks are not a black box. It's possible to see the formulas, see the intermediate results. It's possible to uh, write your own checks and modify the existing one. Then the last item is automatic documentation, which is uh, helping to uh, build a template-based reports, which uh, uh, describes the parameters of the model, the calculation setup, and of course, the results of both general FEA and uh, code checking. And on top of all of this, well, first of all, it's all formed in a circle because it is a repetitive engineering process. And as soon as you have a document, you might want to go to the model to make the updates or to the recognition and uh, change something, use another check and so on, and then fill in the document with new information. It's all automatic. It's all updated within a single button click. So, uh, pretty uh, fluent repetitive engineering process, I would say. But nowadays, SDC Verifier is not only indicating what is the result of code checking for your model, it is also helping you to pick the best possible design decision based on code checking results with optimization. So far till this version, we had only optimization of 1D elements, only of uh, beam members, but in this uh, version, we added couple of more, more uh, optimization rules, which will help you with well design, with plate design, and so on. So this is important, and I'll indicate that uh, during this presentation. But first, let's start from uh, the new codes. Well, as usual, the first and foremost uh, uh, update of SDC Verifier is that it supports the latest releases of FEA software. So Nowadays, everybody linked for the same naming and we have versions which starts with uh, the year and then the, the release number. So uh, version 2022 release two for all the FEA programs is now supported with the latest uh, SDC Verifier as well. And now let's go to the checks. So SDC Verifier, as some of you might know, have had, I'm going to jump through this presentation and also will be indicating the interface. So I don't, uh, yeah, if it's, uh, I hope it won't be too much confusing. SDC Verifier, as you already know, um, has a lot of standards in the library. And uh, in terms of Eurocode 3, we have uh, almost everything. We have members, we have welds, we have uh, fatigue, bolts, fire design, joints, uh, plate buckling, and so on. Now we enhanced as deceivery fire with the connection check. Uh, according to Eurocode 3, it is uh, chapter 7, uh, hollow section joints, which enables the, the joint check of different type directly on your FEA model. So, uh, what kind of sections are supported for this uh, in this version is circular hollow section to circular hollow section connection and uh, circular hollow section to uh, rectangular hollow section and I-beam. Also, you can have a rectangular hoard with CHS uh, or RHS traces, so circular and rectangular hollow sections. And also 
I-beam hoard was the other type. So basically all types of connections between uh, circular hollow section, rectangular hollow section, and I-beam are uh, represented. We have performed all the benchmarks of Eurocode 3 to verify that results of um, SDC verifier match exactly the requirements of Eurocode. We have it now internal and we will post it on our website uh, in the nearest future. Uh, this is the screenshots of internal documents that are showing the values of uh, benchmarks in Eurocode and values of uh, force, uh, brace force in um, SDC verifier matches exactly. Uh, I would like to indicate and to present to you the, the, um, the process of this verification. So <clears throat> this is one of the models for the, for the benchmark. So very simple connection of I-beam cord and uh, rectangular hollow section braces. Um, within SDC verifier, as usually you have your uh, information about solution read automatically, uh, but what you have to do is recognition. So you go to connection finder, press on find and recognize the connection. Since we have an extremely simple model, we have only one connection uh, recognized since it's yeah just one connection in the model. Um, all the description about the connection. So what is the type of cord? What is the type of braces? What is the angle? Is it overlapping? What is, are the dimensions is available here. So um, pretty standard for SDC verifier recognition tools. You press find and all the information about the connections in your model is available in this list and ready to be used for code checking. Then to add the standard, we have one already predefined, but to add the standard, you as usually go to add, select in the list of Euro codes, the connection check. And there is a couple of settings that you would have to define, but that's pretty uh, standard. So, uh, first of all, is the brace type method, which is calculated by brace classification tool. So there is two options to define the, the braces. A manufacturing method, as for all the Eurocode uh, checks, is it cold formed or <clears throat> hot finished? So we'll say everything is hot finished. Uh, material type, two material types are available, so you define what would be in the material type. Uh, yep. And then uh, we have the lambda OP coefficient, which has a description. Um, so it's a field of application, and uh, if there are uh, hidden seam uh, of the overlap brace is welded or non-welded, it is set either to 60 or 80%. By default, it is 60, the lower value. So we'll keep it as it is. And if the I-beams in your uh, model has some root radius, <clears throat> you can define this root radius. Sorry, <clears throat> you can define this root radius uh, in the unit system of your model. So if you're modeling with millimeters, you define the root radius with millimeters over here. If you don't have any uh, roots, uh, and radiuses to be defined uh, for the I-beams, you just set as, as zero and it's defined. Also factors too, uh, so of gamma M0, which is uh, ultimate limit state factor. And uh, so if you put the, the cursor of your mouse on this uh, parameters, you will see the tooltips that indicates what what is what. And uh, here in the list, you can select some of the connections to save time, or if you want to work only with a couple of them, you can uh, uh, select the connections that are going to be verified. So that's uh, clear. And as usual, you can adjust the materials and yield uh, uh, materials properties like uh, yield stress and tensile strengths from this window. Then you press OK, and standard is created. Uh, st standard consists of a couple of checks for different cross sections and uh, different design parameters. In the end, as usual, we have the utilization factor uh, checks. All the checks, as I already say uh, said, um, uh, are editable or open. You can see the formulas. You can see the description, which formula from the standard. So, equation 7.3 for RHS, it's 
7.4 for IBM 7.5. You can go to Eurocode 3, uh, Chapter 7, and uh, see what exactly is this formula. And uh, well, we already made sure that this is uh, correct by um, uh, by uh, performing the benchmarks, but you can always double check, of course. So that's the idea. Uh, result, results are always presented with plots and tables as usual. So we can plot the, I'm now plotting the utilization factor, which in this case, since we have the, the which in this case should be very low. Yeah, the calculation time is, uh, is, uh, okay, I should check the, formulas of this one, I assume. Yeah, I have already prepared the table with this connection check of the utilization factor. So utilization factor is, a, is 0 0.16. So this uh, connection is passing the requirements of the standard. And we have the utilization factors for a punching shear check, for bending, for actual force. So, uh, You'll see all of the of them in this list, and uh, of course uh, the total, which shows the uh, maximum of all the utilization factors. So uh, that's the connection check according to Eurocode three for the hollow sections and uh, I beams. Next part in uh, next update in our uh, schedule today is uh, the optimization tool. Optimization is a part of SDC Verifier enterprise level. So uh, those who have SDC Verifier professional or apps might not have that in their functionality, but it's always possible to upgrade. And moreover, I would like to offer a free trial for the current users of the optimization uh, capabilities of SDC Verifier. So if you don't have that yet, let us know. We are happy to, uh, to share with you the license to try. So, uh, what is SDC Verifier's optimization? It is a possibility to pick the design decision based on code checking result. Uh, for this, I would like to use a different model. Uh, we have the standard model of SDC Verifier. By the way, uh, what I'm showing to you today is shown in uh, FEMAP, but it's of course, uh, is also available for ANSYS and for SimCenter 3D. So all the functionality of SDC Verifier is uh, available for all three programs. Uh, what I would like to do, so as you can see, all the benchmarks of Eurocode is performed. But what I would like to show to you is a different file for the optimization. So. So far, we had optimization uh, rules only for B members, and now it's much, much more. Uh, this model has some uh, weld elements, has some stiffeners, beam stiffeners inside. So to perform the optimization, what we would need to do, what, what I would like to present to you today is optimization of weld strength check. Uh, I have already prepared the standard of uh, DNV on weld strengths. And I have already recognized the welds in my model. So if I go to recognition, I go to weld finder, all the welds are highlighted already in here. And all the welds are, yeah, we can preview them, of course. All the welds in our model are shown now. And uh, for weld strengths, we have to define the type of weld, of course. So what I did, I selected all of the welds in my model and I just defined them as a, a double fillet weld with the uh, throat thickness of four millimeters. By default for everything doesn't uh, uh, bother a lot with, with, the, with the, the setting up. We have more than 400 welds in this model, and uh, I said I defined all of them as a four millimeter weld. Uh, I did a DNV check and I calculated the results. Then I have uh, some of the welds passing the check, some of the welds not passing the check, but I would like to optimize the weld routes to make it 
as effective and strong in passing the check everywhere. So what I'm going to do, I will go to optimization and create a new rule opti of uh, the optimization. Uh, before we had only beam rules here. Now we have a possibility to optimize the beams as, as it was before. So pick the best possible cross section to match the requirements of the standard or requirements of the optimization rule that you set. We have the rule to add the plate buckling uh, optimization, which will help you to optimize the uh, plate thickness. Uh, based on plate buckling code, we have the rule to optimize plate elements, which means you can adjust the thicknesses and uh, optimize based on stress result for fatigue or for uh, static stress check, just uh, modeling some detailed connection and would like to know what should be the thickness of the element to uh, match the static stress check requirements of Eurocode, for example. And we have a well strength. Uh, so when I'm clicking on weld strengths, I receive a window of optimization tool rule where I have to select the load. So let's say I will select the load group one. Okay. And I have to uh, define the parameter for optimization. The parameter would be the DNV standard. If you, if I would have more standards here, I could have selected more of them from this list. So I select DNV, check, uh, check uh, the well check total and total uh, utilization factor. And parameter that I would like to define, I would like this uh, utilization factor to be, of course, between zero and one. So match the requirements of the DNV check. And then I want to optimize the, the by minimum value of uh, weld part throat area. So the lowest possible uh, uh, throat area for the weld would be optimal for me. Uh, I now uh, now I click on uh, uh, now I'm starting to create grouped variables. So to to do this, I uh, click on this green button, and here I can select what to optimize and what are the possible replacements for optimization. So what I can do, I can select all the welds from my list and adjust them, or I can select any any of the, any uh, like one of the wells, like weld 200, 213, for example, yeah. So I'm clicking on this weld. It consists of two weld parts. This is the standard settings for them. And I'll, now I define the possible replacements. So I would like to try what would be with this, uh, what would be the result of DNV check for this weld. If I would do a double fillet weld, but of two millimeters. Sorry. Zero, zero, two. Add. Then I would like to add the same option with three millimeters. Then I'll go for the bigger one, five millimeters and uh, six millimeters. And uh, just for uh, double check, let's do double full penetration weld as well. So I selected. For this weld, for two weld parts, I selected the uh, five possible replacements. Then I press OK. So these two parts are up, are being optimized. Of course, I can define full model here, but uh, well, it would be maybe better first to check the results of the code and then to do this optimization. But uh, I want to focus on the optimization, not on the results. So what we can do here, we want we we can select all the uh, parts, all the wells in our model and optimize them with with different definitions. Of course, the, the longer, the more I select, the longer would be the optimization uh, calculation time. Uh, so what I'll, I'll do now, I select this rule and press calculate. And now as the verifier is running the same check with uh, multiple uh, weld parameters and weld scenarios. So, as you can see in the background, it is done. It uh, takes a bit of time for, I don't know, for one weld, it's maybe 20 seconds, like you can see now. For, yeah, if you are increasing the amount of welds or amount of possible replacements, it's going to be slightly more. Now we see that one rule of, uh, of yeah, one of the rules that we defined uh, have the result. We can define multiple rules as well, based on different loads or different checks and so on. And I'm clicking on that rules rule and I can see the um, results here. So let's select all results. Okay. 
And now I finally see that utilization factor for, I, I selected a, a nice weld which was not passing the check. So for original model, utilization factor was 1.64. Uh, then what we went to do, we if we go for the lower, lower weld, if I replace it, with, let's make this table slightly wider. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we would need to add another dot after, uh, another digit after dot, but I do remember what replacement I did. So this is original, which is four uh, millimeters. Then we had two, three, which is still not passing, five, is not passing, six is almost okay, but still not okay. And if we do a double full penetration weld, then our model is passing the requirement of the standard. Then we do uh, then the same for the next weld part. It's not okay at all, but with double full penetration, this weld would be okay. So what does it mean? It means that in our model, we have some welds that are not passing the requirements of the standard. Well, maybe let's uh, go to this plot and highlight it. So we had in our model some wells, which are indicated with red, that are not passing the requ requirements of, of uh, DNV well strengths. And I selected just one of them to optimize, and I figured it out that with double fillet weld, it is going to pass. So uh, after this rule is calculated, what I can do, I can click on change model, and this weld parts are going to be automatically changed to the optimal design in the weld finder. So I click on yes, new weld part sizes were applied in weld finder tool. To check this, we go to weld finder and we seek for weld strength settings of weld 213 it was, if I'm correct. So 213 is now adjusted from double fillet four millimeters to double full penetration was automatically calculating the parameters of this weld. So this is a very significant update for weld strength design according to uh, Eurocode or DNV or uh, other standards that we have in SDC Verifier that helps you to pick the best decision on weld sizes for your complete model. You start with the lowest or with the standard and then figure out which welds are not passing and adjust those welds quality, uh, uh, th those weld sizes in weld finder automatically, and then you can uh, keep this table uh, for uh, sharing with the CAD department and, and so on. So that's the idea of optimization. And as I already indicated, it also works with other types of elements. So it works with beam uh, cross sections, it works with plate buckling, it works with uh, plate thicknesses. So for plate buckling, pretty much the same, but when you're defining the variables, you are uh, defining the um, uh, plates that you would like to optimize and thicknesses of the plates that you would like to, to pick for the replacement. Okay, so we ended up with the uh, optimization rules and let's go to the next. Another big update, hotspot stress method for checks. Uh, while we are in uh, the same model of uh, with, with lots of welds, um, I can show you where are the hotspot stress settings. So if we get back to weld finder, we have tab with weld recognition, tab with weld strength settings, and now the tab with hotspot stresses. So for all the welds, we can define the reference formula for calculating the hotspots. Uh, the, the hotspots. So uh, I am assuming that uh, yeah, people interested in hotspot stress method are aware of how the calculation is done. So it's basically uh, we're not taking the reference point at the root of the weld, but we are uh, taking stresses from the reference points and we are calculating this interpolation of the stress to the point of, of hotspot stress interest. So what we can do, we can define the settings for all the welds, for all the weld parts. We can define the reference uh, point formulas. 
all the formulas are uh, taken from IIW recommendations. And you can define the uh, reference point either by, sick, by part of the thickness, which is standard like 0 0.4 and 1 or uh, 0 0.5 and 1.5. And also you can define the reference point by distances like uh, 8 millimeters and 12 millimeters and so on. And it's also, uh, sorry, it's also adjustable in the windows of SDC or IFR. So you can actually uh, write your own uh, reference point formulas. What I would do, I would just select formula one, select all of the welds and click on apply. Okay. And now the reference points are defined for all the uh, uh, for all the, the weld parts in the model. But the thing is that hotspot stress method uh, to to have the correct results for hotspot stress method, your mesh size should be uh, valid for the check because if two of the points are uh, happen, uh, it happens that two points uh, are on the same elements. There is no uh, on the same element. There is no point uh, in uh, uh, calculating this formula since result is going to be the same. So we need to have at least two elements to have the different uh, to have the difference results for different reference points. And here, as the CVR is doing the uh, mesh check. So if the mesh is valid for this dimensions of uh, of hotspot stress. Uh, of course, the size of the mesh in our particular model is probably not fine enough. A pretty big element, to be, to be honest, for for the uh, half a thickness calculation. So, uh, well, I'm not going. Yeah, if I'll measure the distance from one node to another, our mesh size is five centimeters and then half the thickness and, and thicknesses is usually like 10 millimeters or something like that. So we would need a finer mesh for the welds to fall into the points of, of interest for, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, particular check. Uh, after the uh, rule for uh, hotspot stress is defined, you can press OK. It will clean up the results. We won't have much time to calculate that. But what I want to show you is that it's possible to use hotspot stress. We have a new result category. First of all, it is possible to plot the hotspot stresses. So if you are doing the uh, criteria plot, for example, it is possible to plot the regular stresses, principal stresses, so on and it should be also possible here we have the new results category hot hotspot stresses so you can plot them on your model or you can preview them in the table as as all the other outputs of sdc verifier and when you're creating the check for example new completely new custom check new standard you're able to use the result of hotspot stress as variable for the formula in uh, in the standards. So uh, by creating a check, I just want to show you. So yeah, maybe not all of the users of SDC Verifier have uh, uh, experienced the writing checks themselves, but let's indicate that as well. So you can create completely new custom check from scratch. You can create the new formula and adding the parameter by calling it hotspot stress and selecting it from the result items. So I can go to uh, stress, the, the regular stresses, and in the end we have a hotspot stress parameter, equivalent, total, okay. So parameter, we can read that, divide that by two, multiply with yield, whatever, creating whatever formulas with SDC verifier is, is possible. So if you want to add material variable, as well, I'm selecting yield. Material yield is here. Pressing OK. I defined an alias for that, and I started writing the formula. So it's yeah, as easy as that. If you can write the formulas in Excel uh, or 
on a piece of paper, you can also write formulas with SDC verifier even more conveniently. Okay, so that's the idea about the behind the hotspot stresses. It's now possible to use SDC verifier, uh, to use the hotspot stresses in SDC verifier checks. Uh, next one is the new tool we added, very specific but very important for some industries. It's a possibility to simulate the compression only support within the static calculation within the simple analysis. So, for example, you have some uh, transportation cases of something fixed on a deck of a barge or on a truck load, and it has only compression su compression only supports in the corner. So it is simply supported, but this support does not allow uh, tension. It only allows compression. And if you put a pin net constraint here for static calculation, of course it won't be, or if you just put uh, directional constraints, of course it won't be completely correct because it will also be uh, taking tension into account. Another case for this uh, uh, application is, for example, crane loads or whatever gantry structure load, which might have an uplift in one of the corner. If we have some structure standing on the ground on top on, on, on four corners, uh, it has compression only support. It doesn't have uh, uplift available uh, or possible. And if you put the uh, vertical con constraint in vertical direction in these corners, you might uh, end up with negative forces, which is not completely correct. So this is very simple tool, which has a very complicated logic of uh, calculating and reversing the matrix of calculation inside, uh, behind the scene. But the idea is pretty simple. You go to tool, compression only support, select add, and you're able to select the uh, loading sets, let's say all of them. And after that, you're able to define the nodes you can either select the node from, well, I don't actually remember where, where I would have a constraint here, but let's say this corner should have a compression in Y direction only. So I select Y compression, and then I could do the same for another node, either by ID or by corner. So I'm defining the node and I'm defining the direction of compression only. It can also be custom. So I can say Y in positive or in negative direction and so on. And then you press OK. And what is done here? Uh, this tool is helping to simulate the compression by creating the dependency loads. And uh, uh, these dependency loads are applied in that location to avoid tension in selected nodes. So uh, it's uh, I don't have a specific model to demonstrate this use case. We will make another dedicated video on that. But it will now create, I don't know if this particular model will work. Well, yeah, it starts to resolve your model and applying uh, unit loads in that points to um, recalculate the model. And to, if there is any tension in that model, it applies a specific coefficient and actually calculated something, but I'm not sure that the, that was the constraint node. So what we would have now, instead of uh, four load sets, we have four more. And this four more load sets have a compensation forces in, uh, uh, in the direction of uh, tension to avoid this tension. So, as the theory far duplicates your loading combinations, applying the compensation forces to avoid uh, tension force in those nodes. Uh, might sound complicated, but uh, yeah, it's pretty easy in terms of usage. And it's very handy for specific cases where you need a compression only support and don't want to go into nonlinear analysis and complex uh, solution because your model is too big and you just need a general analysis for all the reaction forces. I'll make another dedicated video on this with a decent model to, to show that, to show uh, for everyone how this uh, can be beneficial for simple tasks. Okay, next uh, 
next uh, item will uh, yeah i'll end in like nine minutes and we'll have a bit of time for for questions of course uh so this is what's happening uh, ah, yeah the next thing is multi-selection nodal force this is very handy for example for shape design if we need to balance the ship with uh, lots of frames uh what i would do i would just find the uh, frames in my model let's say i have uh, along the z-axis i would have frames so we will skip all the others and we will select only z sections uh, we'll preview them so these are the sections assuming this is some of the sections of the structure that we would have to balance and apply some shear load some vertical load on every of this section to balance our structure it is a common problem and it is uh, yeah hard to apply the loads distributed to all the nodes of the section and so on now it is possible it was one of the requests of our uh, current customer the big ship building company and how would that work uh, we would go to the fem loads and we'll go to add multi-selection nodal force and this force allows to apply multi-nodal forces to multiple selections uh, what we need to do here is to add the selections either from uh, components in SDC verifier or by sections. Uh, sorry, I haven't saved it. Probably. Yeah, I'll find the sections once again. Very quickly. Just pressed cancel last time. So we have the sections. I press OK. I go to FEM loads, add multi selection nodal force. And I will select the sections, but only those in Z direction and maybe just just a few of them. Yeah. Now I have four sections to which I have to apply some uh, vertical force along the Y axis. So let's say uh, 10 kilonewtons, 15 kilonewtons. You can paste it from uh, uh, from Excel. For example, whatever value here and so on. So, and now I'm pressing OK, and SDC Verifier creates four more, four more uh, FEM load, which are this is this are the dependent load, which are applied within, which are applied within uh, FEMAP. It takes a, a minute or so to to be applied. But yeah, to four sections, we have applied the FEM loads uh, in FEMAP. So this tool helps to apply uh, multiple nodal forces on multiple sections directly from SDC Verifier interface. Okay, uh, two more things. First of all, yeah, one big update that everybody, uh, yeah, I know a lot of, of, of people were looking for, some standards, for some standards, it's very complicated to define all the uh, characteristics. For example, we have the we have the uh, FEM standard, uh, FKM, sorry, uh, German standard that has a lot of characteristics to be defined. For example, if you're going to standards, add, select FKM, and uh, here is like 30 settings to be defined. So you will have to go through each of them, define some value, apply, press OK, go to the next one. It is time consuming. If you use the standard often, it is uh, time consuming and it's annoying to set them uh, all the time again and again and again. What, uh, how we can overcome this problem? We can define the, uh, we can define the default settings for the standards. To do so, we go to settings, standard custom settings. Yeah, it's a bit of a confusing name. If you can offer the better name for this tool, I can, uh, I will be very grateful. But uh, yeah, custom settings for the standards. This is what is meant by, the, by this name. And for each and every standard, by default, some values are filled in here. It is the values that are recommended by the standard. And for FKM, everything is filled in. So all the parameters are filled 
and usually people use the same settings for multiple standards all the time so uh, they define all the parameters here if you would like to do some adjustments you can adjust the sickness factor every value can be uh, adjusted it can be also exported all of them to to the file which you can share with your colleague or with the customer and uh, as well you can import the file from the library which is shared with someone else so somebody can define it for you and just share the file and then it is i don't know 100 percent faster now to define the parameters for fkm we go to fkm and in the bottom low bottom corner of this uh, window we have set standard custom settings we press uh, on this button it reminds you that all of them will be overwritten you press ok and everything is defined every parameter is defined according to the settings that you have set in the uh, in your definition so it allows to set the input values of the predefined standards to be used uh, later when creating and editing multiple standards uh, and this is available for any standard we have dnv in our library here and this is also possible here so i'm setting standards okay yes and it's defined uh, one thing very important here we have to be patient and we have to be very careful with the uh, places where uh, we have multi selections so for example for fatigue classes we would have to define multiple selection for multiple uh, multiple values for multiple selections and if i'm setting the default it sets the one fat class for all the model but if i would need multiple rules i add welds once again by, by text from welds from list all the welds okay pressing okay i define the value of one okay and so on so um uh be careful where's the characteristics where you need to define a few classifications for different selections because by default by default it's setting everything uh, as the same value to your complete model okay this is a big update in terms of simplification of uh, standards uh, creation so to say and uh, the last one a minor update is the possibility of exporting items from report to project a couple of users have been preparing the reports let's start from empty designer for example a couple of users have been preparing the reports and they've been um, inserting some uh, results into the, the report for example created the extreme table of stresses on a couple of individual loads and so on and um, say stresses no entities okay so you're playing with this dc verifier report designer creating some items like plots and tables and later on let's create also some plots for the recent loads and later on you want to keep them in the structure to share with the colleague or to share with the customer and to or watch the result directly from the project not from not getting back to report what you can do with the multi select you're selecting all of these items clicking uh, right mouse button and uh, selecting export the project six items were exported so later on when you finished your report and you uh, saved it sent it maybe or keep it for the future work back in the project the information of uh, the um, the items will be stored so the tables and plots that we have created will be stored back in in here so your call you're working with sdc verifier project uh, standards adjusting something and now your colleague is passing by and saying yeah can you quickly show me that uh, stress plot of gravity once again and you quickly go back to this one you have that stress plot of gravity clicking on preview and indicated indicating the values yeah it's pretty low gravity only in here just a little bit of stresses in this note okay so this is the quick uh, export of the 
report item into the project for your convenience. Uh, that is the list of the main features I would like to uh, display today. There is, of course, much more. Well, key of them are optimization, Eurocode 3 connection check, hotspot stress method, and I would say standard custom settings that, that will simplify the life for me significantly, for sure. So that's the items I wanted to present to you today. In the nearest days or in the coming months before the next release, we're going to publish a lot of materials on our website, like articles about how to use this, separate dedicated videos uh, and uh, uh, use cases for this. And next webinar in a month, uh, we'll do dedicated to the optimization tool and we'll show more examples of the optimization. So for those who would like to use SDC Verifier optimization, either for welds or beam members or plate buckling, don't hesitate to ask and feel uh, free to contact me to indicate that for you or to extend your license with optimization capabilities. That's it, that, uh, that's everything I wanted to present to you today and we have eight more minutes for questions. I don't know if there's been any questions in the chat yeah, I, or I in the private you. messages. Yeah. yeah, there was in a, a Q and A and the chat uh, some questions. I will read uh, okay. it for you. Yeah, one is uh, about well check. Can SDC verifier refine the mesh locally for the well check? Okay, that's a very nice question. But uh, the thing is that we don't want to reinvent the FEA program. We work with the best on the market, like FEMAP, Sim Center, and ANSYS, and this program has a lot of the functionality for the mesh refinery. So uh, we can just indicate for you, this question uh, is regarding the uh, hotspot stress method, of course. Uh, in uh, FEMAP, you have an extensive functionality for mesh sizing, for mesh editing, and adjusting the size locally. Uh, that's a very nice suggestion. Maybe we would need to indicate it to FEMAP somehow, but I, I don't think we would want to turn into the measure or FEA program out of code checking. Our goal is the code check and to define the settings for the code check. And uh, yeah, if you would need to uh, refine the mesh, it's better to do this with the FEA programs like directly in FEMAP or directly in ANSYS. Thanks. Uh, also, uh, I have, uh, yeah, uh, for compression only uh, uh, support tool, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, is it pos also possible to defile, define the CCs in the compression tension tool? And uh, another one um, regarding the compression force only tool. In FEMAP, we are usually using a local coordinate system. Does SDC work with a local current system in for this option? This is a great uh, improvement, I would say. This is the first release of this tool. And uh, yeah, we haven't thought about this in the development process, I think, but this is a great uh, update and we can easily add this. So, uh, compression only support tool, we have a possibility to define the parameters, but only in the global coordinate system. Adding a local coordinate system here would be beneficial, and if already two people asked on the, on the during the presentation, it's probably uh, very important. Bohdan, uh, can you uh, indicate if that's uh, a lot of work and can we easily add this? No, it's not a lot of work. Basically, what we need is direction. So, if there is coordinate yeah. system direction. Yeah, yeah. but uh, this one is now in the global. We'll just add another option here. Select a local coordinate system because a lot of people work with mm -hmm. local coordinate system. What you can do for now is use custom and define if your coordin local coordinate system is like uh rotated with uh, 45 degree yeah you can set 0 0.5 here and 0 0.5 uh, here but of course it's not very convenient so thanks for the suggestion we will add the local coordinate system to compression only support 
Uh, also about hotspots uh, method. Uh, it's uh, the hotspots method limited to shell elements are also possible to use uh, with the solid elements. Uh, let me see. If we go to wells and we go to hotspot, uh, we can, uh, for now, the automatic recognition only define wells on shells, and you can, but you can add the solids manually. I unfortunately don't have solids in this model. Bohdan, maybe you can help me with this question. Is it possible to do the hotspot on solids also? It should work, but uh, yeah, but for solids, you need to define the full solid because it uses uh, so not not only welded parts, but all the the weld parts should be defined because because it they are used during the, the recognition yeah, of a, hotspot points. It's a nice uh, case for the demonstration. Say thank you. So yes, it should work, but you won't be able to recognize the welds automatically. You will have to define the welds manually through the through the weld finder. You go to add add the weld by solids and select the welded and non welded parts uh, manually for for the weld. But the but the hotspot will work. And since I'm assuming hotspot stress is very local problem, it's not a big deal. You won't need all the welds in the model, just the local details. It's possible to select them manually. Okay. Yeah. One uh, two more questions. One is uh, is it. Uh... Uh, is there a plan to incorporate sex uh, and with SDC? So I think it's uh, bending sex and SDC. And uh, as a question, are there any plans to include single sided wells in SDC in the future? Okay. In terms of incorporating SOX in SDC, there was no plans so far because it's a lot of cross functionality and SDC very far does this for FEA model and SOX has a specific model and uh, actually I hope that at some point uh, you, we would have all the functionality available in SDC so there won't be need to to use SOX at all but uh, yeah, get back to me with this question by email. Petro, do you know who asked this? We will uh, evaluate how to, uh, yeah, how to how to do this, and maybe we can show you some tips and tricks for the for this kind of evaluation. And regarding the single-sided welds, this is the one of the most frequent questions I probably receive. The thing is that in FEA, there is no general accepted way of calculating single sided wells. If you have some described by standards, please send it to me. We will evaluate this. What, what's the problem here is that uh, we have uh, out of plane bending moments and it's not possible to define from which side it is and uh, how to calculate that. What we are recommending to do in case of uh, single uh, fillet welds, we recommend to select a double fillet and use half the uh, half the uh, thickness. So if you have a single fillet weld with four millimeters, we recommend to take a double fillet with 0 0.02 millimeters and uh, set apply for a certain, well, yeah, define this weld, but be careful of uh, uh, of the out of plane bending moments because they might cause the disruptions in, in this type of evaluation. So I would be happy to add single fillet welds, but there is no general accepted way uh, of calculating the, the single fillet welds with FEA that I am aware of. If you have some routine or workflow that you are working, that you are using for, for this type of uh, uh, sorry, for this type of uh, welds, let me know. Maybe we can help you to automate this routine. And that's that's a, the, an interesting challenge for me. I would be happy to do that. So you have my email address or a phone number. Feel free to contact with me after the session. And uh, I will be happy to uh, discuss the proposals for this. As well for any other updates for the software. So great suggestion for local coordinate system. We will add this immediately and uh, 
yeah, in public version is already uploaded to the website, but we will add to this uh, local coordinate system in the next minor release. If somebody needs this urgently, let me know and we'll uh, send this to you. Yeah, and okay. the last one question was, is, uh, yeah, I, I could answer it. Uh, will the presentation of today be shared to anyone who participated of, to uh, um, this webinar? Yes, of course, we will send it as soon as possible, maybe tomorrow when we processing uh, all uh, video editing and uploading to, to YouTube and we will send Thank to you, anyone yes, who will share the recording. And uh, once again, so many of current SDC Verifier users here, now is the great time to share your suggestions, what you would like to see in next version of SDC Verifier. Tomorrow we have a big planning for the next version. So uh, a lot of, uh, uh, all the ideas for the improvement are welcome, as well as if you need a support with something you've seen today, hotspots, optimization, Eurocode connection, if you need any help and support from our site, we are more than happy to share this information and share the knowledge and help you in setting up the calculation. And I am offering free uh, evaluation of optimizations for those who don't have enterprise license at the moment. So happy to speak to you all again soon. Autumn is also very busy for the events. We'll be at EDIPAC in the coming uh, months. We'll be at the International CE Conference in Vicenza. Uh, Antwerp, Excel, well, yeah. Pl plenty of places where we can meet in person. Finally, when the COVID is, is almost over, I hope. And uh, I'm happy to hear your questions, your suggestions for the new improvements, and we're ready to provide you any support you need for evaluation with SDC Verifier. We went slightly over the one hour session, but I could speak for an hour more. So uh, I would like to thank you for uh, attendance. I would like to thank you for your interest in, in this session and in SDC Verifier, and let's uh, grow together even more. Thanks a lot, and uh, speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.